Hello, my name is Martin Turner and this is Desktop Publishing with Cork Express. It's a series running right the way through the year and over 52 weeks we're going to look at uh, the crucial features of Cork Express. Now, something I'm often asked about, uh, both online and offline, is the preferences for Cork Express. Because uh, these, these preferences, there's lots and lots of them, uh, and people really don't know what to do. And uh, many of the questions we get asked on the Facebook group really come down to have you set the preferences. So uh, today is going to be quite software specific. So the other week we've, we've talked about fonts, we've talked about preparing pictures, but now we're really delving into just a few of the most important preferences for Cork Express. Now, it's slightly different on a PC or a Mac uh, where you find them, uh, and there are just a couple of preferences which are different. I'm using a Mac, it's got slightly more preferences, I'll explain as we go. But on the Mac, I'm going to go to uh, File, and so I'm not going to go to File, I'm going to go to Cork Express menu, I think it's the Help menu on the PC, I'm going to go to Preferences, and this opens up uh, quite a big uh, list of stuff. We're not going to do all of them, uh, because some of them are a bit more self-explanatory than others. Uh, I can change the size of that, and I'm going to do that on here. Now, uh, let's turn on Mouse Poser to help us out. And the first thing you've got is, is the display. Uh, you can set the pasteboard width to something else. So if I, I've just got nowhere near enough space on my pasteboard, the pasteboard is, is the side of... Just, just get out of that for a second. The pasteboard is the side here, uh, where you can paste stuff. Uh, so if I'm working on a document and I don't want that picture in the document right now, I can just put it on the side here. And by default, that is 100% of the width of the page itself. But uh, there might be some reasons why, going back to the preferences, I don't want that. I might want to have a smaller or a larger, uh, and I can make that a larger figure or a smaller figure uh, if I want to. Uh, we can change the, the pasteboard colour using the colour theme. That's a different preference. Um, and you can also set the monitor uh, that you're using. Now, this should usually be set to automatic. Now, there's a really good reason why not. And if you find your colours have gone funny, uh, and you can't fix it by checking the pictures, I would go to this preference and just check that monitor is an automatic. Uh, I'm assuming you've calibrated your monitor. If you've not calibrated your monitor using an X-Rite device or, or a, a spider or something, or just the, the inbuilt tools in your computer, then all your color work will always be off. And it may be you've had a monitor uh, calibrated uh, for a particular purpose uh, maybe you've changed some stuff yourself. So if in doubt, always calibrate the monitor first and then go and change this to automatic. Now, uh, you can change the color theme uh, on your desktop. You might notice that my desktop doesn't necessarily look quite like yours. And uh, you can go through and you can change, and that's, that's the default, which is a bit different from mine. Um, I don't like the way it does the trim view. You've got the light gray theme. Uh, again, I don't like that. You've got the old Cork Express 10 theme, and you've got a high contrast fit theme, might work for you, and a dark theme, uh, which is a lot like things like uh, Final Cut Pro, uh, Capture One Pro, uh, the latest in, in Photoshop and Illustrator. Uh, for myself, I'm, I'm working on one that is like the default, but it's just tweaked a little bit. But you can, you can change all of these colors uh, to suit what works for you. If you've got a, a particular visual impairment, uh, in terms of color blindness uh, or uh, problems with contrast, you might want to work on these a little bit. Now, this is just on a Mac. I'm afraid I think it's going to come to the PC uh, fairly soon, but, but right now on the Mac, you can change the hotkeys for pretty much uh, every possible function. Uh, and that's really useful for a number of reasons. Now, I keep all of the hotkeys at the default usually. Uh, I do tend to use the function keys uh, to, um, uh, to help me do tags in, so anything on the function key kind of gets lost. But uh, if there's something which I use a lot, uh, I can actually put a function key in for it. Now, um, there's so much here that you really don't want to uh, 
um, be scrolling through. So I'm going to go to table and uh, I'm going to, uh, where is it? Uh, okay, there's, there's something which I, I wanted. Uh, maybe it's not table, maybe it's in table. Let's, let's go down to, let's go through the menus then in that case. Um, and we'll go to the non-menu commands uh, and we're going to go to the uh, tables. Oh, where's this gone? Uh, I really should have checked this before we started. Um, but what, what I've done for tables is, uh, here we are, right, combined cells is a big bugbear of mine. So let's just go to a table and um, we'll create a table there on the pasteboard. Uh, we're going to make it three by five. And um, uh, quite often, uh, so I'm, I'm, I want to combine those. And I, I, I can do uh, contextual menu, table, combine cells. But that's really, really annoying from working on the table. So what I've done is I've just got this, this um, if I can see the keyboard for a second, I've, I've just got on, on the keyboard, command, and then the key, I think it's the, it's the accent key or the mantissa key, which I don't use for anything, uh, except when I'm working in French. Uh, command that, and I've set that to uh, do or undo combined tables. And that can go really quickly. And I don't just use that particular key for combining cells in tables. Uh, I use it for anything. So that's my go-to key for uh, if I've got to do something a lot, which is a, a funny menu combination or some really extraordinary control, shift, alt, number of your phone or whatever uh, uh, thing. I can't remember what it is. I'll just quickly change uh, that uh, item on this preferences menu to that hotkey. And when I want to do something else, I change it again. And I use it all the time. That's a really good tip. Okay, not yet available on a PC, on a Mac, it's very helpful. And you can make different sets of keyboard shortcuts. And we've got one from an ebook, which I'm not sure if it came with or I created it. Then you've got input settings. Um, we've got the quotes of different languages. And you can turn smart quotes on and off. So smart quotes turn them into curly quotes, which are, are, are generally much better. But if you're having problems with that, for example, you've got lots of inches in there because you're doing measurements in inches uh, and it keeps changing them, you can turn that off on imports. Only on import when you work with that or when you're typing in. Um, you've got page range separators. So if you, t if you want to type five pages, five, print pages five to six, uh, usually it's a hyphen, but you could actually do uh, print pages five star six. Uh, and you can change it that way. And the same for non-sequential pages. Um, we can turn drag and drop text on. If you like that, do it. I, I tried it for a bit, didn't like it. Um, we've now got font fallback. So when you, you're missing the font in Cyrillic or Greek or Latin or Japanese or Korean or Chinese or, or, or whatever, uh, this will take you back to um, uh, the, uh, a font that will work. So if you're doing a document and there's suddenly there's a bit of, of Japanese in there and, and the font the document's in doesn't have any Japanese, this will take it back to that. Some other things on here, but we won't, we won't, uh, I won't do those right now because I want to come on to open and save. Now, I would recommend uh, that the very first thing you do uh, in Quark Express is to uh, turn on auto save and auto backup. Um, Auto save every five minutes, auto backup every five revisions. Uh, you can set what the destination is and you can set the library saving, but this will save more than anything else. If you're working on a document and suddenly it goes funny, if you've got five layers of backup which Quark makes automatically for you, then you can go back to the most recent one. It's annoying, uh, but it's an awful lot better than starting again. The same with auto save. So five, every five minutes, unless it's a really huge document that takes five minutes to save, in which case make it 10 minutes or 20 minutes. But it just means that if you're working away, you, you go really in the zone uh, and you, 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 you suddenly think, oh, what if I only did that? And there's an instability on, on your system, your version of Quark with your particular operating system and whatever mouse or pen you're using, and it goes crash. Then when you reopen that document, it will uh, say, Auto save version available, 
uh, and it will take you to that. And that has saved my bacon so many times. Now, if you are um, uh, crashing uh, quite a bit, it could be you've got a dud extension. So Quark Express uses extensions extensively, like that. Um, and uh, if you're having some problems, you can turn on Show Extensions Manager at Startup uh, regularly. It's annoying otherwise, um, but uh, it, it can help you out. It may be you've got different sets of extensions that, that are incompatible with each other, and you just want to turn them on and off. Okay, um, let's come down. There is some stuff about sharing text boxes and text paths and picture boxes, uh, which actually you can override when you're using the sharing menu. So I wouldn't work on that too much. Um, uh, you've got font previews in the font menu. Now, uh, if I go back down to my font menu, uh, you'll see that uh, I, I'm seeing the font there. Now, if your machine is really old, or you've got thousands of fonts, and I would suggest using a font manager to get around this, showing those previews may uh, result in it just taking a minute or so to, to get going. So in that case, go to Preferences, uh, and turn the font previews off. Otherwise, I would keep them on. Computers are so fast these days uh, that uh, you know it really isn't a problem. Um, when you've got fonts missing, what does it do? Uh, usually it will display a fonts missing dialog. You can turn it off if you're using, for example, a font management utility, which gets in the way of that. And you can also specify a default replacement font. Um, either Roman or East Asian. Now, I'm not going to do the East Asian stuff because this is mainly an English language one. The index offers you uh, different choices of separation characters. And again, if you're formatting a document like a book, and it's got to exactly match a previous one, the previous one was odd, you can just change those. Well, that's all we've got time for this time. And I know we're only halfway through the preferences. So we're going to come back and do the rest of them next week. I'm Martin Turner, author of Desktop Publishing with Quark Express 2016. Uh, all these things are in the book. So you can get that at Amazon or your local bookstore. And if you're desperate to know what the rest of the preferences do before next time, then do order the book and have a look through. Otherwise, I will see you next time and we'll go through the rest of the preferences.